Zeit grind the training Zeit grind the training Image compression is the kind of tedious yet complicated drudgery that many web tools make designers spend a lot of time laboring over. As you'll see in this video, SiteGrinder lets you retain maximum control with minimum effort. Photoshop files take up a lot of disk space. That's because Photoshop image layers contain such a high level of color and transparency information. The geniuses who created the web picked several image file formats that are quicker to download at the cost of losing some detail and flexibility. These formats are called GIF, JPEG, and PNG. SiteGrinder can give every layer that it exports as an image a different compression setting. Luckily, 99% of the time, you'll use a JPEG setting for layers made from photographs and a GIF setting for all the rest. We've made three copies of this site's logo to illustrate the main differences between GIFs, JPEGs, and 24-bit PNGs. This is the page displayed in a browser after SiteGrinder has built it. All three versions look pretty much the same, but watch what happens when I edit the HTML a little bit to change the color behind the logos. Now you can really see the difference. The GIF on the left shows that it can have totally transparent pixels, the areas that were blue but now are yellow but GIFs can't have semi-transparent pixels. Notice how the blue from the background got rendered into the semi-transparent anti-aliased edges from the original layer, making it look good on blue, but not so good on the new color. JPEGs, on the other hand, don't support transparency at all, so they always become opaque rectangles. Luckily, if the layer contents aren't rectangular, SiteGrinder is smart enough to render the background into the necessary rectangle. The logo still looks correct, it's just stuck with this background, which no longer matches what's behind it now that I've altered the color. Sometimes these backgrounds included in the JPEG will end up obscuring layers that are lower down, and using a GIF would have revealed them correctly. This is another reason to only use JPEGs for photographs. Finally, we have the PNG, which I rendered at 24-bit with transparency. In this case, the image is a lot like a Photoshop layer. It will look good on top of any background, but at the expense of taking much longer to download than the other two versions. By the way, you may wonder how I changed the background color behind the logos just by editing a little code. The reason I could do this is that SiteGrinder is smart enough not to produce any image when it doesn't have to. Solid color rectangles are best represented entirely in HTML. They don't need an associated image file. This makes cleaner code and faster downloads, and it's one of the many things SiteGrinder does automatically, so you don't have to waste time thinking about it. We select compression settings for our layers in the SiteGrinder plugin window's compression tab before we build. Thanks to faster connections and cheaper hosting, the days when web designers had to labor over every image to save every possible byte are over. SiteGrinder's philosophy is that most of your image layers will do fine with the same compression preset, almost always a GIF setting. Only a few layers will need a different setting. As a result, SiteGrinder supports a default compression setting and then allows you to specify, when necessary, exceptions to that default on a layer-by-layer -layer basis. SiteGrinder initially assumes you'll want the GIF 128 dithered preset as your default setting. It does a great job on most layers. If we need to use a different default setting, we just choose it from this menu. The settings that are listed here originate from Photoshop's Save for Web and Devices window, including any custom presets we may have created there. To apply a different setting to an individual layer, we just click in the Save for Web Preset column next to the layer in the list. We'll do this for our documents only photographic layer. In the dialog that appears, we select the preset or go back to using the default. In this case, we'll pick JPEG Medium, another very commonly used preset. At this point, we're ready to build. If after looking at the built page, we decide some layer needs a higher quality setting, we just return to this tab, make the change, and build again. If none of the presets are appropriate, you can close SiteGrinder, create a custom preset in Photoshop's Save for Web and Devices window, and then open SiteGrinder again to choose your new custom preset and rebuild. In practice, users rarely have to do this. SiteGrinder will often choose to merge some of your image layers together when it builds. 
The fewer individual graphics a page has, the faster it will download. Sometimes, SiteGrinder will auto-merge layers that you want to assign different compression settings to. In this design, for example, we have a frame behind our photo in its own layer. We want the frame to use the default GIF setting, but we want the photo to get a JPEG setting. The problem is that the photo layer doesn't appear in SiteGrinder's compression panel list. This is because SiteGrinder has decided to merge the photo layer with its frame. When SiteGrinder merges layers, it names the result after the bottommost layer that it's merging. We need to tell SiteGrinder not to merge our photo layer with any others. To do this, we close SiteGrinder and add the no merge hint to the name of the layer. Now when we open SiteGrinder, that layer will appear as its own entry in the compression panel, and we can give it whatever compression preset we want. SiteGrinder has a powerful system for creating image galleries and slideshows. The compression panel is not used on gallery images or thumbnails because we don't import gallery images into our Photoshop document as layers. Instead, they're kept as separate files on our hard disk, and we'll select them using the Content Manager's gallery controls. These images won't be recompressed at all if they are the correct dimensions for the gallery. You can find details about gallery image compression in the gallery documentation and videos. It's important that your Photoshop file's color profile and Photoshop's color workspace be set to sRGB, the standard for the web. If you build with the wrong color space selected, you may notice a difference between your Photoshop layer colors and the colors that appear on the final page. When you create a new Photoshop file, you can select its color profile. You can change it later using Photoshop's Assign Profile or Convert to Profile commands in Photoshop's Edit menu. To change Photoshop's color workspace, use the Color Settings window from the Edit menu. Select North America Web Internet from the Settings menu. 